Hi, I'm Marius Masilar with Tuts Plus, and I love the terminal. Admittedly, you're not likely to be using it all that often with today's wonderful user interfaces, but when you do find yourself doing things the old-fashioned way, you can bring some of that modern style with you. I want to show you how you can spruce up the look of OS X's terminal to suit your preferences. We'll be making cosmetic changes, but there's a practical side too. Setting up your own look ensures that readability and contrast is perfectly suited to your environment. The terminal is a system utility, so you'll find it in the Utilities folder within your Applications folder. If you're like me and hate having to dig through folders for things, you can also use Spotlight or a tool like Alfred to pull it up immediately. By default, the terminal looks like this. It's plain, serviceable, and in need of some customization. First things first, open Terminal's preferences either from the menu or by using the global shortcut command comma. From here, click over to the Settings tab. This is where we'll be spending our time. Along the left side, you'll notice a persistent panel containing settings profiles, each providing a different look. It's worth exploring these to see if one of the defaults appeals to you. But since I like to get my hands dirty, I'll opt to create my own profile from scratch. At the bottom of that panel, hit the plus button to create a blank profile and give it a descriptive name. I'm going to work my way through the settings and see what needs adjusting. While it's true that you can apply any system font here, terminal use tends to require the predictable spacing and distinctive characters of a fixed width typeface, and a great debate exists among programmers as to which monospace typeface is ideal. Consolas and Monaco are two popular options, and since Monaco ships with OS X, it's going to be my pick. 11 points is a decent size, although I find myself preferring 13 or 14 to keep things readable from a distance. Next, you'll make some decisions about the behavior of text. Most of the options are self-explanatory, and my preferences are to keep everything checked except for the last. I prefer to keep bold text separated by color instead. Speaking of color, you'll see those options directly beside the text options. Pick a color that's not only pleasing to the eye on its own, but that also provides contrast to your intended background color, which you'll be setting up shortly. In the interest of making myself feel like a hacker when I'm performing server updates, I'm choosing green for normal text. A light blue is going to do it for bold, and I'm going to pick yellow for my highlights. If you're wondering what all this ANSI stuff is, don't bother. It's a vague term referring to a character set that expands upon ASCII. If you were on bulletin boards way back when, you may recognize the acronyms as they were used to describe art that people assembled from text characters. In that context, you can think of ANSI as an expanded set of character and color options versus ASCII. For us, it's only relevant if you want to tweak the default color palette. Personally, I tend to leave it as it is because I don't often encounter multiple colors in my usage of the terminal. So, the final task in this section is to pick a cursor. Are you a block kind of person, or do you prefer the sleek underline? If you're a writer, perhaps the familiar vertical line is your choice. Whichever you like, make sure to decide if you want it to blink as well. Since the terminal is often referred to as the command prompt, I like to keep the cursor blinking to remind me that it's prompting me to do something. If you're feeling wild, you can even change the cursor color. Now that I've exhausted my development of the text, all that remains is to make sure that the window itself looks the way I want it to. Click over to the Window section of the Settings tab. Here, you can give each terminal window a default title, and the checkboxes below allow you to include various additional points of information in the window's title bar. I mostly just keep the active process name, so I know what each terminal window is up to. The background area allows you to set either a solid color or an image as your terminal background. I don't like image backgrounds, so I'm choosing a simple black to complement my hacker theme. When you click the color block, you'll see that the color picker gives us some interesting additional options, notably the ability to set a custom opacity level for the background and add some gentle blur to help obscure whatever lies beneath. Values of about 75% and 20% respectively seem to make me happy. If you routinely have multiple terminal windows open, you can consider adding a dedicated set of opacity and blur settings for inactive windows to help distinguish them. 
mine are going to become more transparent. With our colors in place, we need only decide how big we want the default window size to be. Naturally, this can be adjusted for each individual window by dragging the corners, but if you have a size that you'd like all windows to start at, you can set it up here. And there you have it. You are now the proud designer of a custom terminal profile. In the Profiles panel, make sure to highlight your new profile and click the default button. This way, Terminal remembers how you want new windows set up. It's also possible to set up window groups with different profiles per window in case you regularly perform multiple terminal tasks and want a different look for each. But that's a tip for another day. For now, whether you're fiddling with remote servers, performing maintenance tasks, or simply giving low-level instructions to your computer, you'll be doing it in your very own customized version of Terminal.